Asia passed her core subjects EC through 6 science test on her first try using our study guide. She said she couldn't have done it without 240, and that made my day. My name is Emma, and I help teachers pass the Texas core subjects EC through 6 exam. And today, I'm going to help you. This video is going to prepare you for the core subjects EC through 6 science subtest. And this video is going to cover three things. What's on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts that you'll need to know, and we're going to look at a few practice questions. We've got a lot to do, so let's get moving. Now, the core subjects EC through 6 science subtest consists of 18 areas called competencies. Yeah, 18. That's a lot. That's more than any other test in the EC through 6. Maybe we stop here and take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, we're ready. And don't worry, I'll help you make sense of all of them. Here's the list of competencies as they're given to you, but we can clean this up a bit. Competencies one through six relate to science instruction and general overarching science concepts. Let's group these and call them domain A, or teaching science. Competencies seven through 10 include forces and motion, physical and chemical properties, and two on energy. So let's call this domain physical science. Competencies 11 through 14 cover information about living organisms. So we'll call those life science. And finally, competencies 15 through 18 relate to earth and space. So let's call them that. Whew, much better. Each of these domains contains an entire section of science education. But don't worry, we'll break it down piece by piece. And to test each of those pieces, stay with me till the end and check out our test-aligned practice questions. First up, teaching science. Now, while Texas doesn't officially tell you how many questions are in each competency, it's about two questions each. And since this domain has the most competencies, six of them, it has the most questions on the exam. The first competency is pretty easy. Most safety questions are going to be common sense, like wearing goggles around chemicals and glass. You may also see a question on when to use specific equipment, like a graduated cylinder. Moving on. The history and nature of science is a bit of a mixed bag, or a box of chocolates. We never know what we're gonna get. For the history part, you might be asked what someone like Newton did. For the nature part, you can't forget the scientific method. And because this is a teaching test, you'll be asked a lot about teaching kids that scientific method. One of the most popular ways is using inquiry-based learning. There may also be questions about teaching critical thinking and other science skills. Oh, my favorite, the impact of science. So next time a student asks, why are we learning this? You have that answer locked and loaded. One key thing to know, the difference between renewable and non-renewable resources. Here's how the 240 guide breaks it down. Basically, renewable resources renew. Think green energy and crops. Non-renewable resources do not. Think fossil fuels and minerals. Next, concepts and processes. That's not really descriptive at all. Let's look at some ideas here. Think of this area as the unifying framework. Within science, some things are true if you're studying biology or chemistry or physics or whatever. For example, systems are units scientists study. That could be the human body or a test tube or an ecosystem. They all have inputs and outputs, boundaries and feedback loops. There are a few others, like how form and function always go together. Things change and hit an equilibrium, and each branch of science uses various models. Okay, these next two are about teaching, instruction and assessment. First up, instruction. You'll need to know best practices for using digital technology, diversity and differentiation, increasing engagement, removing misconceptions, and fostering critical thinking comes up here again. And then after you teach it, you have to assess it. Like all Texas exams, you need to know the difference between informal and formal, and formative and summative assessments. Before we leave domain A, here's one last tip. Since your science knowledge will help you answer these questions, we recommend studying for the other competencies first. For example, you may be asked what resource to use to teach a certain topic, or which terminology fits in with a particular concept. The more you know about those, the easier it will be to pick out the best choice to teach it. We've made it through our first domain. And for better or worse, that was the only one focused on teaching. The rest of the domains are all subject matter content. Let's start with physical science. This is basically simple physics and chemistry. Up first, forces and motion. There are some words with specific meanings here, 
and they're words you might use in your everyday life, but now you need to know the official scientific definition. Make sure you know the difference between displacement and distance, and speed and velocity. Similarly, you'll want to know the difference between mass and weight, all three of Newton's laws, the six types of simple machines, and the mechanical advantage they provide. Whew, got all that? If you need to brush up on any of those, use the link below to get the 240 guide. Moving on to physical and chemical properties. Definitely make sure you know the difference between those terms, both for properties and also for changes. A physical change that comes up a lot is phase changes, like going from a liquid to a gas. Here's an image from our guide. Notice that there are specific names for each change. At each phase, the molecules behave differently. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff they could ask you for in this competency, but that's the biggie to make sure you know. Now, did you notice that energy is in the title of these last two? Look how many times the word energy appears in the descriptive statements. 11. Makes sense, right? Texas is pretty into energy. You'll want to make sure you know the difference between kinetic and potential energy, heat and temperature, and the three movements of energy, conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's watch a clip from a 240 study guide video for this last one. So remember, there are three main ways thermal energy is transferred. Conduction, through a solid or between two materials that are touching. Convection, by a moving fluid and radiation by an electromagnetic wave. And that's the key stuff to know in physical science. Next up, life science. Most people like this one the best. Now again, these subjects are broad. You can major in just one of these competencies. So let's go through a few things you'll need to know for each one. First up, structure and function. Many small children are shocked to learn that there are no baby butterflies. They hatch from eggs as caterpillars. That's called complete metamorphosis, and that, plus many other life cycles, can definitely come up on this exam. You'll also want to know the requirements of life, like why a rock isn't alive, the parts and types of cells, and human and plant body systems. If you need to brush up on all of that, it's all in the 240 study guide. Wait, wait, go back to that. Here's that complete versus incomplete metamorphosis bit. See how the butterfly has a pupa stage? That's how it completely changes. Moving right along, let's go to reproduction and heredity. They should really call this genetics battle royale because it's all about knowing who wins the fights within pairs of terms. Like seriously, look at all these pairs of terms to know. That's so many. Good thing the 240 guide has flashcards. Moving on. Contrary to popular rumors, Texas does teach evolution. You're going to need to know the basics. All living things have adaptations that help them thrive in their environment. How did they get them? Let's take a look. According to natural selection, reproductive success varies. This is the survival of the fittest that you've probably heard of. Over time, you get more individuals with these favorable traits. And so eventually, the species gets adaptations. Also, make sure you know what artificial selection is. Last up in life science, organisms and the environment. Basically, ecology. Again, you can major in just ecology, so there's a lot to know here. Let's take a look at one that comes up often, homeostasis. Homeo means same, and stasis means state. So homeostasis is the ability to remain in the same condition. Basically, organisms do stuff to stay how they want to be. If you get hot, your body sweats to cool you off. Like how I'm struggling to do some homeostasis under these hot studio lights. Oh, this flower is wilting. Within your body, lots of organs work hard to maintain homeostasis, like your kidneys constantly filtering your blood. Reptiles, plants, even fungi, they all do homeostasis. And that wraps up life science. Need to brush up on any of that? Check out the 240 guide using the link. We're almost done with content, and then we'll move into practice questions. The last domain is earth and space science. Up first, structure and function of the earth. You need to know the names and properties of the layers of the earth and the atmosphere. So from the inner core all the way out to space. One key layer of the Earth is the lithosphere, which forms tectonic plates. Movement within the lithosphere drives constructive and destructive processes. Here's an example from our guide. As two plates move apart, the mantle comes up and constructs new crust. Some change happens again and again. We call those Earth cycles. There are four you need to know for this test. Rock, water, carbon, and nitrogen. You could Google them and hope to find all the right info or just use our study guides. Next up, energy again? Yep, 
but this time with a focus on weather and climate. Speaking of, make sure you know the difference between those two terms. Weather is short-term, while climate is long-term. Make sure you know what causes weather and climate. For example, the rain shadow effect makes areas behind mountains drier. Okay, last up, basic astronomy. Now, I know it says solar system and the universe over there, but the exam really likes to ask questions a little closer to Earth. I'm talking about the lunar cycle. Make sure you know why the moon appears differently across the 28-day cycle. Here's another image from the 240 guide. For example, the full moon appears when the moon is basically behind the Earth. And those are the big things to know here. Now that we've gone over some of the big concepts, let's look at some practice questions to show you how these concepts can appear on the test. Now, you seem to really like videos. Videos are a great way to learn science. Did I mention the 240 guide has a lot? And I mean a lot of videos? We have over 60 for the EC through 6 science. Now for questions. Let's start all the way back at the beginning in the teaching science domain. First up, lab safety. Which of the following is a safe laboratory procedure? Many volatile compounds are quite toxic and can produce long-lasting health effects. Fume hoods are designed to increase airflow to remove fumes and protect any lab occupant from inhaling them. So this is the best answer. Let's check out that concepts and processes section. Which of the following accurately summarizes the difference between a hypothesis, a scientific theory, and a scientific law? The best choice here is D. A hypothesis is a predicted outcome. A theory is a proposed explanation based on evidence, and a law is a documented description of observations surrounding a phenomenon. Let's do one more in domain A. How about assessment and instruction? Which of the following statements best describes a formative assessment? Summative assessments are used to determine what students know at the end of the year or at the end of a unit. But formative assessments measure what students know along the way. They should be given on a regular basis. Domain A, done. Now we're moving on to the actual science questions. Starting with physical science, specifically simple machines. Jennifer moves her wheelchair up a ramp to enter a building. The ramp she is using is an example of which simple machine? While all the answers listed are simple machines, an inclined plane or ramp is the example of a simple machine which increases the distance of travel, but decreases the force needed. And let's look at a question on matter. A solid gold bar is melted in a smelter. Which of the following statements correctly compares the volume of the solid bar to the volume of the liquid gold? Volume is a measure of space occupied. Although both have the same number of molecules, the heat needed to melt the gold increases the spaces between molecules in the liquid. The liquid will have a greater volume, so this is the best answer. Let's move on to life science. Specifically, let's talk about metamorphosis. The diagram shows the life cycle of which of the following organisms. The butterfly is the only organism listed that undergoes complete metamorphosis, which includes a pupa stage. Ooh, how about those natural selection questions? What do those look like? Pressures driving natural selection include all of the following except available resources, climate change, and predator-prey relationships all do drive natural selection but equal populations of all organisms would not drive natural selection to occur. So this is the best choice. We're almost there, just one domain left. Let's peek into some earth and space science questions. How about a question on the rock cycle? Pieces of broken rock often become cemented together to form a new rock. This rock is referred to as, this is the best answer. Sedimentary rocks are formed when sediments or pieces of broken rock are cemented together to form a new rock. And last, but not least, how about we check out a question on the phases of the moon? Which of the following best describes the conditions of a full moon? A full moon occurs when the full face of the moon is illuminated by the sun and visible from the earth. So this is the correct choice. This occurs only when the earth is between the moon and the sun. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that our study guide has 402 practice questions? If you really wanna make sure you're prepared for the core subjects EC through six science exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 study guide. It has hours of videos so you can watch or listen whenever you like. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. Oh, and it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.